Great to be here and happy birthday to the Global Tea Break. Um, it's quite interesting. Alan asked me to do this uh, next 45 minutes, but I've decided to break it down to 10. So just make it nice and easy. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so where did this come about from? Um, myself and Alan known each other a while and I've, I, I do a lot of human performance, and leadership coaching, training. And I'm a firm, passionate believer in the human and the human ability to change. And when we're looking at uh, minding ourselves, minding our heads, and it's come up an awful lot in the last uh, year, realistically, there's a lot of things we have to learn to unlearn. So our unlearning is a really core skill. And when Alan was talking to me about this and kind of how to, to kind of reduce pressure on people, uh, a lot of things that we need to do is actually just realizing what pressure we have on ourselves at the moment. And I use, like to use pictures and analogies. That's an analogy I'll be using in a minute. It's glass. And as you can see, it's got a liquid in it. Fairly simple and straightforward. You're going to come back to that in a, in a minute. Important part about that is our ability to deal with life and everything that goes on is a lot to do with capacity management. Capacity management is the ability to actually deal with everything that's going on. And when we start talking about stress, people think about negative. But positive things that are going on in our life as well also have a, can have a stressful impact and actually draw down on a level of capacity that we, that we deal with. So I'm a firm believer in rather than trying to reduce things, actually increase the capacity so that you don't need to focus or put the energy on reducing anything. You're just increasing your capacity to manage it. And that's where the second glass comes in. So my approach, both of them have the same amount of water, but this one has the capacity to handle an awful lot more extra. And that's what I want to talk about today is actually just to go through a couple of tools and techniques that we'll be able to, to utilize very, very effectively to give yourself peace. And where I'll start to talk off, off on this one as I just got to get the technology running. Uh, the, one of the most important parts to think about and to remember and to start being aware of is hyperbolic discounting. It's a bias and Owen will know this from the financial side. Hyperbolic discounting is, is, is a very interesting uh, bias that we, we, we can all get affected by. And I'll give you an example of it. Uh, Wendy will know this because I know Wendy from, from Dublin as well. So she, she have, has kids going to school like myself and the kids get, off, get offered, actually, do you want to have a lucky dip today or do you want to get points to your to end of year scores? They're going to take the lucky dip today. That's the, that's the human nature that we are. Hyperbolic discounting is taking the easy, easy work now rather than doing the hard work for the future. So when we're, we're looking to, to mind our head, to give our head peace, we have to have that in mind because we're going to be doing a lot of work that is not for now. Absolutely right. The marshmallow test is another one there, Jared Geraldine. But a lot of what we're doing is not for now, it's for later. And it's like pensions and all that sort of thing as well. So bear that in mind. Um, my approach tends to be very much focused on habits. I see the human, I see myself as, a, as a, <clears throat> I don't see myself as a machine, not, not like David Goggins, but I see our, our makeup as machinery. And I find the easiest way for me to, to understand how to develop myself is I separate my brain from myself. So my brain is not trying to help me. My brain's looking after itself. It's trying to get me to do the least amount possible because it doesn't want to use energy. So when I want to do things, I need to figure out ways to either hack it turn it around or develop positive habits. So the brain is actually tricked into doing what I want it to do, not what it wants to do automatically. And a key part to all of this is going to be the area of vulnerability. Like a lot of what we're going to be doing uh, and looking at and developing is vulnerability because we're gonna find out as we look at these areas that we're not great at it or we could do an awful lot more. And that's where I say, be vulnerable, be kind to yourself. Alan mentioned uh, in a previous tea break about the Pomodoro, and I'll come back to that in a minute, but the Pomodoro is <clears throat> essentially, it's a technique of, of do, doing work, to, uh, work over a short space of time and very, very effective. Um, where a lot of people can get very confused on it is they look at the 25 minutes of work and they focus on that. Me, I know, no, that's not what, work, what works. What really works is the five minute reward because that's what your brain wants because now you're giving it dopamine. You're giving it a neural adrenaline, ep epinephrine. So it's our epi oh, epinephrine. So it's able to actually start to concentrate a bit more. That's what your brain wants. The work that it's doing during that 25 minutes is what it has to do to get that hit. 
Once you start to recognize how that works, you can build a habit up that's very effective at resetting and getting that work done from that perspective. So like my, my approach is very simple. Like we, have, we all are individual and different people. And there's a lot of queer eggs in this call. I know that from experience or from, talk, from knowing a lot of you as well. We are all individual and different and we're coming from different positions as well. So, so just bear all of that in mind. But when it comes to where we are, there's no binary, yes, I'm happy or no, I'm sad. There's, there's no bit in the middle. And it's very important to recognize that when we're looking at what we're doing for mental health and for, for developing ourselves or developing our mental resilience and strength. It hap what, what we develop happens over time. And when I'm always in a, an image I really love is very easily, if we're not careful, we can become the match on the end and burnt out. So what we always want to be doing is using tools and techniques to reset and bring it back across and then allow that energy to move to bring it back across. And that's all that, all that work in there to, to move it forward. So what I want to talk about as we go through this, we're going to talk a bit about journaling. And this journaling is, is something that I find really, really high value and high power with. And I know Alan's got a lot of benefit on it recently as well. The great thing about journaling is it gives perspective. And perspective is the real key to what we want to be able to, to, to deliver an impact upon. All right. Um, journaling, a lot of people think, oh, I'm going to be doing journaling. I have to get a brand new lovely journal. That's BS. I'm sorry. And I'm a straight talker. I journal an awful lot in the A4 fills gap. Journaling is just a posh way of saying, writing down what's on your mind. And there's a couple of different ways of doing it, a couple of different methods that I would, I would use and promote. Uh, one thing I do, which I, I highly uh, encourage people to, to look at and take on board is gratitude journaling. It's the most simple thing at the, either at the end of the start of the day, whichever suits you, actually taking a note of three things that were brilliant today that you're thankful for. And I say three things, and I generally ask people to limit it to three. I know there's days where I could put down 10 and there's days where I struggle to get one on the page. But doing that work to put down the three, the three to every day builds that muscle, builds that capacity and also that awareness. And this is where the hyperbolic discounting comes back in again. We tend not to want to do that too much on the good days, but it's on the bad days that we really need to look back on it. And that's what makes real, real benefit from it. Uh, other things that I really am passionate about is doing a brain dump. So a brain dump is, is where you just actually just put everything that's on your brain out in a piece of paper. It's very, 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 very effective. Um, where it works really, really well is just emptying everything on your head. Take about, And I would normally set a, a couple of minutes, maybe five to 10 minutes, just to empty everything out and then go back over and see what matters. Because if you're carrying it around in your head, you're actually, that cognitive load that you're using on, to, to get that across is too much. It's really, really hard to do. Uh, something else that I would focus on is structured questions. So I would have four or five questions that I would ask myself on a daily basis. So why am I doing this? What's good about this? What could I do better? When will I do it better? And I would just use them to prompt conversation and just do free writing. I'm a big fan of morning journals. I find that really, really good and really, really effective. Um, some other things that to, to, to build in, and <clears throat> I've a, I've a, I could talk about this for days, but I'm, I'm not going to. But there's a couple of things to think about. In the area of self-care, sleep, critical, breath work. How often has, have we actually taken the time to stop and take a couple of breaths? And when you're really frustrated with something, that can be a real, real lifesaver and give you that absolute massive amount of power back to yourself. There's a lot of talk around mindfulness at the moment. Um, and the great, best way I can describe mindfulness is focus. And a lot of people think uh, that, that come back to me and to, to saying, oh, well, you're talking about mindfulness. Like, yeah, I have to put half an hour aside for that. No, you don't. Just take three breaths. Focus on those. And the difference that does over time is phenomenal. Uh, and I'm a big fan of bored moments. I like to just sit there and think. Um, I'm a creative type of person, so but it's it's just that that's just me. What's really important, and this is one I, I, I'm, I'm a big passionate person about, is language. Uh, <clears throat> language can be so important because we use it more in our own heads than we do integrating with other people as well. So the great phrase I use it comes from Carol Zweig's book, uh, uh, Growth Mindset. Yet I don't know how to speak Chinese. I don't know how to speak Chinese yet. 
big difference in those two statements. Another one is reframing. So a lot of times when we're kind of trying to do something really tough, we say, I've got to do this. And we actually flip that around and say, do you know what? I get to do this. Changes how you approach it completely. I am not a fan of must, could, should. Um, there's a phrase that I use uh, in that, but I won't because I'm going to be polite today. Uh, I promise that I wouldn't be too bad. Um, but what I really empower upon everybody is a great way to use words to set intentions. So you can set an intention contract with yourself using two words called if and then. I use it an, an awful lot at the moment. But I want to get things in regular, things in routine. So if and then, an example would that be, uh, the one that I'm using at the moment is if I go to make a cup of coffee, then I'll drink a glass of water. And I've massively increased my level of water intake and I've reduced my coffee intake. So these, these are great techniques that you can use to develop that muscle and to, to move it forward. Scheduling, look at time boxing. It's a great one. And what I am a big fan of is a not to-do list. So we're all being bombarded with this to-do list, to-do list, to-do list. Throw it out the window. Make a not to-do list because then you know what you're not going to do, keep to it, and that's more focus. It's gonna give you more power to drive that forward as well. And accountability. Accountability is something that is really, really important. I've been, I've been said a couple of times, I'll mention about having skin in the game. When you're talking or discussing with people or looking at actually developing your mental capability, your mental resilience, your, your ability to be more, get more done, hold yourself accountable, either with yourself or with somebody else. It's, it's something that's really, really powerful. And actually calling it out with somebody can be a really, really high benefit. And I, I would tend to use a, a kind of a, an, what would I call it? Uh, an acronym. I'm ex-Army. I spent nine years in the Army. So I use an acronym called WHOOP when I want to focus on getting something, ding, something done. And that breaks down to the wish. What do I want to get done? Happiness. Can I, can I reframe it happy, in a happy way or is doing a negative reframing of benefit to me? The outcome, when, it, when will it happen? When will it be achieved? The obstacles, the people, the topics, the feelings, and the plan. If this, then whatever, because of whatever. I find that's a very, very powerful technique to actually help people and to help myself to get things done. And I'm a big fan of abbreviations, GSD for me, and an awful lot of things that I do is just about get shit done. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you with... Last one, and I'll share this with Alan and with, uh, with, with, with the guys as well. I do, I've, I'm a big fan of breath work. I've mentioned it earlier on. I have an app that I put together, which is free to everybody who wants to use it. Uh, and it is just about actually giving somebody some guided approach to actually going through and doing different breaths. You have a number of breaths in there in the area of box breathing, triangle breathing, tulip, 487 and those type of things, but they're all very, very good for getting that level of um, capability and again, giving your headpiece.